Got us a little time while we wait for the herd to catch up with us and all. What do you say we rehearse it once more? Yes, sir. All right, now, I'm the trail boss or one of his drovers. How come you're out here, boy? Well, we're on our way to... Murdoch, Murdoch. Yes, sir, Murdoch, to look for work. What happened to your horses? They bolted. Got scared by a painter. Oh, no, no, no. You don't want to sound too sure. It could have been a wildcat or even a snake. Yes, sir. What's your name, boy? Duke Williams. Duke Williams, sir. Duke Williams, sir. And my pa is, is Jonas. You're a good boy. I guess all this seems kind of strange to you, don't it? Waiting out here for the herd to catch up with us and changing our names and all? Yes, sir. Sort of. Well, it'll all turn out all right, boy. You just trust me. I do, Pa. No, no, never mind that. Just, just leave it there. Yes, sir. Let's go. Don't give me any excuses, Campbell, but you're letting the cattle stay off into the brush. I'd get back to your place and stay there. Aren't you good for anything but giving orders? You've been asking for a lesson for a long time. Now get off your horse. Hey. You uh, taking the day off? Cable, you've been slacking off in your work. Once more, and you can draw your pay. Hey, boss! And his boy right in the middle of the trail up ahead. But they won. Catch on with us as far as Murdoch. No chance. Well, they're afoot. On foot out here? Our horses bolted. Oh, we could use another hand. All right, Pete, let's take a look at him. Look, Williams, uh, we're 
working a cattle drive can, it can be pretty rough. It wears a man down. Yeah, well, I'm 41 years old, if that's what you want to know. As far as Murdoch, then, Pete, you take the boy and turn him over to Wishbone. I'll have Jesus bring you back a horse. What's your name, boy? Duke Williams, sir. Well, my Pete Nolan, you don't have to serve me. Yes, he does. That's the way I brought him up. Well, let's go. for you. Well, this is Duke William. He's 10 years old, and he and his pa are signing on as for his murder. Duke, this is Wishbone. Very pleased to meet your acquaintance, Mr. Wishbone, sir. I'm Mr. Musco. Yes, sir. Glad nice to meet you, too, sir. Boy, oh, now, there's a young fella you could take some lessons from. You see how nice and polite he is to his elders? This boy's been raised right. So was I. Well, somewhere along the line, it must have rubbed off. Where are you from, son? Liston Wells. And we're looking for work up in Murdoch. Only our horses got scared by a painter. And my pa is Jonas Williams. Well, thanks very much for all that information. Get it. Sore in the morning. I got some liniment there for you when you're ready. I won't need it. Suit yourself. Thanks, Hulk. No trouble. <clears throat> you let me know if a boy don't do his work. Duke? Best worker I ever had. Hey, you got a fine lad there, Williams. You can be proud of him. Got to keep after him, though. Can't let up with young'uns. Oh, I don't know. Well, of course, I'm not a daddy, but... Will you take Colts now? You give them a little rain, they'll be as gentle as possible. You tighten up on them, well, sometimes they get a little hard to handle. Yeah, well, boys ain't Colts. They gotta learn early what's right and what's wrong. They gotta learn to respect their elders and speak when spoke to. That's the only way. Mind if I sat with you? Free country. <clears throat> what are you doing on a cattle drive, old timer? About time you were rocking away on the front porch, ain't it? <laughs> you call this stew? This swill ain't fit for hogs. You're right. It's too good for them. Which makes it too good for you? Calling me a hog, you mangy old coyote. You take your dirty paws off of me. I gotta take out five at once. Just take me, bully boy. You all right, Wish? Of course I am. You don't need to butt in. This is my fight. What's the commotion? Him. He don't like the food. Ain't fit for pigs, and I said so. Well, we can fix that up, Tibbets. You're through right now. Back in gear, get out. Need any help, Tibbets? 
I don't need any help from you or anybody else in this lousy camp. You wouldn't have been much help to us with a busted jaw. Why'd you take a chance like that? I had to make it look good, didn't I? Now, just remember, when you get to the fort, don't talk to anybody but Major Dixon himself. How will I know where to meet you? You just keep riding in the direction of the Rock River. You can't miss us. Now, get going. <laughs> What's holding you up? It won't be long now. It's liable to be a lot longer than you think. Cable, I know the favor carries that bill of sale right on him. And he ain't about to just hand it over to you. I wouldn't want him to, Shelby. Part of the fun of this is getting to settle with Mr. Favor for all his kindness. <laughs> Shelby making out. He does his job, why? Oh, nothing special. Except I've been wondering. He signed on with Tibbets and Cable. And those two are the only ones we've been having any trouble with. Well, Shelby's all right. He minds his own business. I mean, I ain't exactly taken with him. But if we start holding a man's looks against him, well, we're gonna be short-handed around him. Oh, is what do you mean by that, Mr. Nolan? What's your fear? Nothing wrong, Aces. Oh, no, senor. I just want you to know about senor Williams and his boy. Their horses are in the remoda. Yeah, well, they'll be glad to hear that. Si, senor. Only I have seen horses put by pumas. They are hard to handle, sometimes for days. But these horses are gentle. Well, they've had time to calm down. Si, senor. I go tell senor Williams. Hasta luego. Cookie. You addressing me? Would you see any other cooks around here? Well, I got a name, and it isn't Cookie. All right. Mr. Wishbone, is that better? Some. Now, what is it you want? Some of that brown wrapping paper you carry in your wagon. What do you want that for? Make a kite for young Duke. Well, I got the string in the wood. All I need is the paper. You said a kite. You're going to make that boy a kite. Well, you hear real good. Why? Because I feel like it. And a boy needs a toy to play with once in a while. You got any objections? No, just curiosity. How is it you all of a sudden got such interest in a boy you never saw till yesterday? Why, ain't you heard? He's got $1,000 in his poke, and I'm aiming to get on his good side so I can steal it. Just don't seem like you somehow. Well, it ain't. At least it never was, but I happen to like the boy. Besides, he needs a rest from slaving away for you and that pot walloper. Now, did I get the paper or not? You get it. I guess I spoke out of turn. I'm sorry. Forget it. Thank you, Mr. Cable. Oh, you can drop to Mr. Duke. We're friends. Ain't we? Yes, sir. Well, then you can drop the sir, too. Say, maybe you'd like to ride out on the drive with me today. How about it? Could I? Well, why not? Can't be any fun bouncing along on that chuck wagon all day long. Come on. We better get back for breakfast.
out. The kid never has any fun. Anyway, who counted on them steers breaking loose? Get your things. Get out. You through. Oh, Mr. Favor. Stay out of it, William. Oh, I've got to talk to you, Mr. Favor. It's important, please. know how to start, Mr. Favor. Well, then, why don't you try starting with the, the horses? Well, they didn't bolt, did they? You wanted to latch on with us. Why? Him? Cable? His name is Adam Bonner. He's my son. I ain't Jonas Williams. I'm Cleet Bonner. The boy's name is Will. He's my grandson, Adam's son, Mr. Faber. Adam run off when he was about 14. I was so stiff-necked, I didn't go after him. Didn't hear a word from him for, oh, better than eight years. And, and then Emily showed up. Emily? That's Adam's wife, Mr. Faber. She had Will with her. He was about... Eight months old. Adam met her up in Denver, married her, and walked out on her before the baby was born. She died right after I took her in. And uh, you raised him as your son? I had to, to make up for Adam. Yeah, I knew I was doing the wrong thing, not telling him about his real pa, so I set out tracing Adam and... If you won't hold it against him, Mr. Favor, I found out he'd been in prison up in Kansas, attempted robbery. He only got two years. It was his first offense. One time in prison don't mark a man for life. <laughs> there, there ain't much more to tell. If he's your son, how come he doesn't recognize you? Oh, he never seen me without a big beard. And last time he seen that was better than 18 years ago. Why don't you just tell him? I can't turn my grandson over to him until I, I know him a little better. Know what kind of a father he'd make. You see what I mean, Mr. Favor? So, if you'll give him another chance, please. Everything works out the way I hope it does. Well, by the time we get to Murdoch, all three of us will be out of your hair. All right, Cable. We'll forget what happened. Thank you, Mr. Faber. Thank Williams. He put in a good word for you. Spot there behind your ear. You running from some Williams? Or is it somebody? No, it's nothing like that. Well, if we was in a town somewhere, I could understand you putting yourself up. But out here, who's gonna see you except maybe them cows? Some folks think that gray hair. Limits a man like it was a sign he was carrying, saying he couldn't do a proper day's work no more. Well, don't your boy think it kind of strange you dyeing your hair and all? He don't know. It's hard work being a father. I mean, keeping up with your son, making him think you can do anything anybody else can do. Well, you can't find that rocking chair forever, old timer. <laughs> You set some store with that boy, don't you? Yeah, I sure do. Of course, he's only a boy. You gotta keep after him to mind his manners, teach him right from wrong. <laughs> you sound like my pa used to. 
I sure hope you do a better job than he did. He was always after me about my manners, about obedience. I scared silly of him. In a big black beard, he looked like, looked like a giant to me, like the devil himself. His smile. <laughs> oh, he sure kept me jumping. Till I was about 14, then I got sense enough to run off. Ever thought to go back? To what? I saw a man in Kansas once trying to break a horse. He's jerking on that rope till the poor thing's neck was almost busted. That is Paul. He was gonna break me or die trying. To him, there wasn't two sides to anything. Just his. For all of me, he can rot. I haven't talked that much in 10 years. You sure listen good, old timer. tomorrow, Lieutenant. You sure there is a herd? Of course there's a herd. You think I'd have rode to the fort if there wasn't a herd? Well, it wouldn't be the first time some civilian tried cheating the army. You think I'd do that? Even if I was to want to? Which I don't. You might have thought we brought the money with us. Which we didn't. I know that. Just so you do, Tibbets. We're just the advance party, see? We'll report back to the Major. He does the buying. Sure, sure. Let's move on. Gosh, you can do anything. Can't you, Cable? <laughs> yep. That's me, Duke. Jack of all trades and master of none. There. We use a little paint, but still all looks pretty good. Oh, it doesn't need any paint. It's beautiful. <laughs> Wanna know something? I got a kid somewhere. Be you about your age now. What's his name, Cable? I don't know. I don't even know if it's a him. Here. You can whittle some. And don't cut your fingers off. I'll be right back. Cable, it appears to me you keep spending more and more valuable time with that brat. Well, that ain't no brat, shall we? It's a boy. I like him. You like him. It's beginning to make me think that you ain't keeping your mind on our business here. Now, now take it easy, Cable. I, I didn't mean it that way. Tebbets ought to be back tomorrow. He's sure to have some soldiers with him. Now, you ride out tomorrow, and as soon as you see Tebbets, you hightail it back here. I'll take care of the rest. Good. Mr. Favor? Right. I'm Lieutenant Cass. This is Sergeant Burrell. Howdy. We're watering the herd tomorrow at Brock River. I'll bed him down there and ride into the fort with my ramrod Shelby and Tebbets here. Fair enough. The Major will send out a detail of men the day after, and, and your men can help him cut out the 1,500 head. Right. Nice meeting you, Lieutenant. You mind telling me why you changed your mind? The Major said your letter was a flat no. Didn't you tell him, Tebbit? You didn't ask me, Mr. Favor. 
One of my daughters back east took sick. Needs money for an operation. Can't wait till the end of the drive. Sorry to hear that. Well, we'll see you at the fort. Sergeant! Got a hand it to your Cable? I even thought you would favor myself. This part was easy. The next part won't be. And look, Pa, he made me this knife, too. Ain't it a fine one? Yeah. Hey. That looks sharp enough to cut yourself on. You like this, Mr. Cable, don't you? Oh, yes, Pa. Yeah, I guess I ain't the easiest person in the world to live with. Sure you are, Pa. I come down on you pretty hard sometimes, Will. It ain't because I want to, son. But how else can I teach you what's right and what ain't if I ain't strict with you, huh? I know, Pa. We've had some good times together, though, haven't we, boy? <laughs> like that fishing trip we took when you was five or six? You liked that, didn't you, boy? <laughs> I sure did, Pa. Anybody in this camp wants to go exploring tomorrow? Exploring? Yep. One of the drovers who's been this way before says there's caves up ahead. Make mighty interest in exploring, wouldn't they? Well, I don't know. I... We won't be anywhere near the herd, Mr. Williams. We'll be watering them for a couple of hours. Plenty of time for me and Duke to stretch our legs, huh, boy? Oh, please, Pa. I'll take good care of him. Well, you speak to Mr. Wishbone if he can spare you, it's all right with me. Oh, gosh! You didn't have to do that. Now, relax, old timer. I don't do nothing because I have to. longer to water. Two or three hours, we'll make it before noon. Good, let them get their fill. We'll move them out in the middle of the afternoon. That way we'll get a good start on tomorrow. Oh, Williams. Yes, sir, Mr. Favor. You should make Murdoch in two days. You said you and Duke weren't going no further. Yeah, we'll say goodbye there. And what about, um... Well... I almost told him last night, Mr. Favor. I think he'll be with us. Told who what? Uh, who's gonna be with you? What are you talking about? I don't know why I didn't tell him. My mind's almost made up. I hope you know what you're doing. I think I do. Deep down, he's all right. What's that all about? Well, now, you was listening, wasn't you? Yeah. Yeah, well then. <laughs> Yes, sir, we got ourselves half a day. Come on, explorer. There's our caves, Duke. Under those rocks. Last one there is the trail boss's uncle. Here they come. Tevich, you better get back there behind the rocks. We don't want that boy seeing you. Not yet, anyway. You might say that. Well, why don't you come over and sit down and rest a spell? Come here, Duke. I want to talk to you. You know, Duke, I got a confession to make. We're going to play a different kind of game. You mean there ain't no caves? Not unless we was to blast one of these rocks. Look, son, you do trust me, don't you? 
Well, I got to get back to the herd for a bit. I want you to stay here with Mr. Shelby. You can play. You know, like you was in a fort and the Indians was attacking you. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Take me with you, Cable. I'll, I'll be back in before you know it. But I don't want to stay here, not with him. Oh, Shelby ain't so bad. Well, his face may not win no prizes, but he's good with boys. Let me come with you, Cable. I told you, son, I can't. Shelby. Come here, boy. Now, you're going to stay here with me. Now, you heard what he said. Boy, no, will you just take it? Don't act like that, son. Shelby's not going to hurt you. Cable, will you get out of here? This is like holding a young wildcat. Now, boy, I want you to sit down over here. We're going to have a long wait. Now, you just sit there and be quiet. You and me will get along dandy. Whose horse is that? It's Duke's. Well, what happened? Me and the boy was exploring, and his horse throwed him into an arroyo. You fathead, I told you. But there ain't time for that now. The boy's caught by one foot halfway down this arroyo, and it's going to take both of us to get him back up, with you holding the rope and me going down at hand over hand. It's only four or five miles from here. You won't be over an hour. Maybe not that long. I was hoping that the kid's old man wouldn't find out until we got him back. I figured he'd be scared half to death. Pete, Quince, get the herd moving. Take care of this horse. Get up. Come on, get on your feet. Now, listen, Duke, I want you to listen to me real good. Now, when they get in a little closer, you start waving at them, just like you was really glad to see them, you understand? When you see favor, you just smile at him. You don't say nothing. Now, you understand? You don't say one word. Because if you do, tell him, Tevitz. I'll plug favor right between the eyes. I don't see anything. I, I promise. All right, that's a good boy. You get out there and start waving. Come on, Tevitz. My golly, Mr. Favor, it's Duke. He must have got out by himself. boy? Mr. Favor? Sir, I'd be much obliged to you if you'd remove that gun belt of yours. And hurry it up. All right, boys. Well, if it ain't the king of the beeves. Looks kind of lonesome, don't he, Shelby? Uh-huh. Sorry, Mr. Favor. They took me out here and they made me wave. And... Nobody's blaming you, boy. How's your move, Cable? Turn around. What are you afraid of? Not you, trail boss. You killed him! You killed him! A little tap like that, he's just taking a snooze. Well, has he got it? Is that it? If it ain't, we wasted a lot of hard work for nothing. Yeah, that's it. It's the ownership papers. Hey, Joe. Have you seen my boy? No, he's not out here. Well, he's not back there by the chuck wagons, neither. I seen him and Cable riding off together while we were watering the herd. Yeah, but they ought to be back here by now. Well, Cable came back about an hour ago. What are you talking about? He came back and got Mr. Favor, and they rode out that direction. That horse he brought with him. It must have been the boys. My grandsons? Come on! Hey! His grandson? 
That's what he said, wasn't it? Well, none of our business. Let's go, I tell you, let's go. What are you doing? Untying them. Well, why don't you just go ahead and give them a horse, too? I don't mind leaving them here, but give them a fair chance. A chance? Why don't you tell the boy the truth of it? Without food and water, you're leaving us out here to die. Who said anything about dying? Don't you believe it, Duke? Not for one minute. Look, I've seen lots of folks come through worse things than this. About this time tomorrow night, you'll be back on that chuck wagon. Sure. All he's got to do is walk 20 miles. Shut your mouth! Look, son. I'm sorry you got dragged into this. But I didn't have no choice, you understand? Well, we did have some good times together, didn't we? Cable, we're wasting time. One canteen. chance as long as you're breathing. What's it like? Dying, I mean. It's a part of life, like being born. Does it hurt? No. It's sort of like going to sleep. Hey, who said anything about dying anyways? We're not going to give up that easy, are we? That's more like it. And all the time, I thought he liked me. Hey, now, I do believe he did. Yeah, I, I realize that's gonna be tough for you to make sense of. Look, Will, a man ain't all one thing or the other. He ain't all black or white. He's a combination of things. Sometimes he, he acts one way, and sometimes he got to act another way. Well, like. He's using you to get me out here. Now, now, he didn't like that. But he didn't. I'm sorry. I had not a cry. You know, who told you that foolishness? Makes a person feel better to cry sometimes, no matter how brave they are. This lump on my head will allow. We'll just rest up a bit. You think we'll find water by morning? I think we better head. What's that? <laughs> Sounds like a horse. Hey, we, we just may get out of this after all.
How you doing, Duke? You come back to finish the job off? I come back to bring water. Go easy on it. There's enough for a couple of days. Maybe even three. Shelby and Tibbetts know you come back? They ain't got your welfare at heart like me. Don't let that get your hopes up. All we want's the money. Murder don't enter into it. No. Look, you got your chance to get out of this. What do you want, an escort back to the herd? Speaking of escorts, I think I hear you's coming back. I must have woke up right after I left. You worried? Get back behind them rocks. Hey, there's his horse over there. Cable, you in there? It's me. And that's far enough. You got them with you? Them who? Favor and the brat. I ain't got nobody but my gun. We don't want no fight with you, Cable. We just want that owner's paper. Come and get it. We had a vote. We voted you out. Now give us the paper and we'll get along. <laughs> you voted me out? You ain't fooling us a bit, Cable. We know you came back to help them. Well, that's your lookout. Now that money's ours and we're gonna get it. Come ahead. Till morning light. His horse is out there in plain sight, so he's not going anywhere. So we'll just stay here and wait him out. Uh huh. Stay back there, son. It's not going to be quiet much longer. You too. That was a bright thing, leaving your horse out there. Well, I didn't know they were going to catch up with me so quick. Cable. Cable, you hear me? Me and Tevitt's been thinking it over. Um, you're back in on the deal. Now, come on out and let's ride out of here. I've been thinking about it, too, Shelby. I don't need either one of you. So go ahead, ride on out. You still going through with it? I never did know when to stop. Listen, you cover me. And I'm going to skirt around this hill, and I'm going to come down on top of them. All right? Right. Sure wish I had an extra gun to give you. Makes you so sure I'd line up with you if you did. Him? They get me. You don't think they'd let him walk out of here, do you? Son. I didn't mean to. You're much obliged, anyway. What is it? What's the matter? That shot jammed this chamber. He couldn't have done that again in a million years. I got to get that rifle. Tibbets gets you. What happens if you get him? I'll give you all the water you can carry and as many blankets as you need. And a horse. 
No horse. I'm still going to that fort. Nothing will stop me but a bullet. How about it? What's your idea? Tevis doesn't know this gun's busted. You take this gun and zigzag out there and draw his fire. I'll make a run for the rifle. Uh, why don't uh, you draw his fire and I'll go for the rifle? And plug both me and Tebbets. My way or nothing. With a gun. Don't go, Mr. Faber. No. Mr. Faber, he was going to kill you. No, it wasn't what it seemed like, though. He was protecting Will. Oh, Tom, so you're the one. Oh. I didn't know, son. I, I thought. I'm sorry. Oh, don't be. <laughs> don't be. Duke, look, son, I'm sorry. I never meant for you to... Mr. Faber, the pouch. It's in my belt. Oh. Hello. He was more good than bad, wasn't he, Mr. Faber? That he was, Will. I killed him, Mr. Faber. You couldn't know? I don't mean the bullet. I killed him a long time ago. Now let's hope he didn't die for nothing. You, you got a second chance. <sighs> Things are gonna be different with us, son. From now on, Things are going to be different. 